Welcome to Steam Locomotives in Miniature at the Steam Workshop. Rebuilding a 3 inch scale Gallet Traction Engine Part 8. The part of the engine that I'm currently working on is known as a simpling valve, and by operating this valve it converts compound running into simple running. At the moment I'm repairing it because the valve leaks which is no good at all. More about this problematic simpling valve later on. I need to have a look at the general arrangement of the drive shaft. This is a secondary shaft, the first one being the crankshaft, and this goes through the middle of the frames. It has a large double gear on one end for the gear selection, and on the other end it has this smaller gear, which in turn drives another large gear that drives the final gear which is attached to the winding drum. But it doesn't stop there. The winding drum is free to spin on the axle, but if you put some pegs into it, it drives the wheels. So you have a few choices. You have a high and low gear selected by the levers at the top of the engine. And then on the final drive with this winding drum with the built-in differential, you can either engage or disengage that from the wheels. So you can use it to wind things such as a plough or you can use it to drive the traction engine about. The technology of traction engines and the technology of railway locomotives is very different. But one thing that they both have in common is all of the parts are very heavy and very shortly there will come a time when it will need two people to move it around on the bench. I put this cog in place, but at the time that I filmed this I couldn't find the key. There are quite a few boxes full of little bits and pieces, and none of them are labelled, and none of them were photographed, so it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle for me. This is the main axle, and I'm just removing some masking tape from when it was painted. I'm not yet ready to fit all of these parts permanently, I just want to see what goes where and why. For instance, what is this? It's a washer that I found, but I don't think it goes on the axle because it's a little bit too big. This, however, does go on the axle. This is the winding drum with its large gear and the differential in the middle. When I first slid the winding drum onto the axle, I was a bit surprised to find that it didn't engage with the main gear at the top. This had me puzzled for a few minutes, and then I realised that the engine does have suspension, and the suspension was not in the right position and the axle was being held at the wrong angle at this stage, so I corrected the suspension and the gears meshed perfectly. In this clip I'm fitting the outer part of the differential, and this fits very well indeed. There isn't much evidence of serious wear on any of these gears, and that's a good thing, plus they also seem to mesh OK. As you can see in this clip, nothing's binding, and it's not too slack, it's about right, and I still haven't found the key. So I resigned myself to making some more keys, and I asked John, who was a proper engineer, John, I need to make a key, what have we got I can make a key out of? And he gave me a piece of steel, and on this piece of steel, in very large letters, it said, Key Steel. And to be honest, after all these years, I did not know that there was such a thing as key steel. If ever I made a key for an engine, I would file it up from a piece of silver steel usually. But alas, the key steel that John gave me was quarter of an inch square and it didn't fit in any of the keyways on any of the gears that I needed it for. In the steam workshop on the day I was doing this job, it was very warm indeed, so I really didn't fancy filing up key steel in this temperature. And besides, there are plenty of other things to do. Like this. I'd been looking at this part for a while and I couldn't figure out where it went. And then the penny dropped. It goes here, it's the inner support for the eccentric that drives the water pump. This meant that I had to undo the pressure gauge clamp which holds the pressure gauge in position and then I had to remove the entire pressure gauge assembly to get this part in position, very fiddly. I think it's time to revisit this simpling valve. At the beginning of this episode I was filing this simpling valve arm with a needle file and I'm still doing that. In the original clip I was filing a V in the arm to take some silver solder and now it's been silver soldered and what I'm doing is reprofiling the arm. And now I'm cleaning it up with some sandpaper and after this I'll work down the grades of sandpaper until I get a good finish on the arm. While I was doing this job I was looking around almost daydreaming when I saw in one of the boxes a couple of keys. One of them for this gear. So I thought, I'll fit this and then figure out what holds the key in place. It was fairly obvious which part in the box secured the key. So I put this in place and that's OK. The next small part that I couldn't find originally but then suddenly spotted it in a box is this. 
It's the top steering shaft support that supports the rod that goes between the worm drive and the steering wheel. So I thought that before I lost it, I'd fit it in position. And here you get the general idea. I didn't tighten it up because I don't know the exact angle that it's going to sit at once the steering gear is put in position underneath the belly tank. And oh no, once again it's the dreaded simpling valve. This mushroom shaped valve that you've just seen that looks like a valve on a car actually leaks and it lets steam from the steam chest through into the cylinder, even when the regulator's fully closed. So this is a major problem. If this valve leaks when you're running down the road in the traction engine, you can't stop it. Well, you can. You move it into reverse with the reversing lever, but that's not the point. I think this is a very bad design. Not just the design of the valve, but the way you have to fit it. It's really difficult. It was very difficult to get it off. It's going to be more difficult to refit it. I'm using some stuff called Time Saver, which is a lapping compound. And the first one that I used was the coarse one. And now I'm using the fine one. And you just run it back and forth like this, with some lapping compound in place. And after a while, what I normally do is wash off the lapping compound and apply a new amount. You notice how little of this stuff I'm mixing. I can't believe how much it costs. I looked on eBay just to see because I thought to myself, yeah, this would be useful stuff to have in the workshop. But the price put me off a little bit. I think I'll just stick to the fine grinding paste that you get in the tins with the coarse grinding paste at the other end and then use tea cut. But anyway, I've nothing against this time saver stuff. It really is very good. I just never do enough lapping to make it worth buying any. After the lapping process, it's very important to clean off all the lapping compound. So what I then did, that I haven't shown because you don't want to see a grown man cry, is I refitted the valve, and this took ages. I made a couple of gaskets, refitted the valve painstakingly, connected up all the linkages, put some compressed air into the engine, opened the regulator, the engine ran, closed the regulator, and the engine continued to run. The simpling valve was still leaking. As it was getting near to home time, I thought I would go and sit outside and watch Dave testing this small steam locomotive, and put all thoughts of that stupid simpling valve out of my head. This is a very small Great Northern Atlantic. It's a two and a half inch gauge engine, very small indeed, and it was a bit of a struggle to initially get the fire to light. So here's Dave helping things along by feeding in some more small pieces of charcoal soaked in paraffin into the firebox. This engine really is tiny. If you look at the size of Dave's hand, yes, it is that small. Not Dave's hand, I mean the locomotive. And of course, the firebox is not exactly big either. It's about, what, two inches square? But with a bit of patience and a bit of time, eventually the fire got hold and pressure started to rise in the boiler. That's it from me for this episode. I shall go home dreaming of the simpling valve. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.